This is Southern Cross News with Rachel Williams. Good evening everyone and welcome to Southern Cross News. The trial of a woman accused of the murder of 41-year-old Aaron Matthew Monaco in 2016 is continuing in the Launceston Supreme Court. Today, the jury was shown a police interview Belinda Leone Colburn made the day after the fatal stabbing, where she tells officers she stabbed him multiple times. But this was refuted by evidence given by co-accused Nathan Thomas Smith, who said he stabbed Mr Monaco and acted alone. The jury has heard conflicting evidence here today with Belinda Leone Colburn admitting to police that she stabbed Mr Monaco on the night of the 4th of November 2016. But this afternoon, co-accused Nathan Thomas Smith took to the stand saying he was standing over Mr Monaco at the time and that there was no possibility Miss Colburn was involved. Belinda Leone Colburn sat in the dock with her head lowered as the police recording was played in front of the jury. The interview was conducted in the Launceston Police Station the night after the murder. One of the first questions she was asked was, are you one of the persons involved in killing Mr Monaco? To which she replied, yes. The court heard she was upset with him and took a knife with her. She also told officers that she had been heavily drinking, was under the influence of marijuana and the night was all a drunken blur. To this, police then asked, how do you know you stabbed him? She replied that he ran out of the house and that she still had the knife with her. Police asked her if she remembered physically stabbing him. Yes, was her reply. But this was all refuted by Mr Smith, who took to the stand recounting the night, saying a confrontation broke out at the unit, where he knocked Mr Monaco into a beanbag in the lounge. He told the court he stabbed him once in the back side area and that the next 30 to 60 seconds were a blur. Mr Smith said he stabbed him a couple more times before Mr Monaco ran out of the house. The court also heard Mr Monaco owed Mr Smith money for drugs that he'd sold him and that the pair were not on the best of terms. The trial will continue tomorrow. Jessica Moran, Southern Cross News. A police crackdown on postage and freight coming into Tasmania has netted 33 suspect parcels in just one week. Authorities found a wide range of drugs and despite some attempts to conceal the substances, detector dogs still sniff them out. These are the crime-fighting hounds, together with officers that help stem the flow of drugs from interstate to Tasmanian streets. Last week they were in action at post and freight centres in Launceston and Hobart, inspecting thousands of packages. Of the thousands of parcels that we screened, we came up with 33 suspected uh, parcels, and of those we then conduct investigations around them. We got a raft of illicit drugs in those packages. This is one of the discoveries. Police say the equivalent of 40 hits of ice concealed in a DVD case. They also found cannabis, cannabis oil, cocaine, MDMA, steroids and LSD. We are finding that uh, criminals are using more sophisticated means to try and deceive the dogs and the x-ray units. Uh, so a classic example was last week we had a significant amount of coffee uh, packaged around uh, a drug. But that didn't fool the police dogs. Bernie and Aggie are getting plenty of pats on the back for their efforts in Operation Vitreous. They're specifically trained to detect uh, specific types of drugs um, and um, their degree of penetration through wrapping and that is amazing. Police say there are three main ways drugs arrive in the state. The postal and parcel system which was focused on last week but also by aircraft and ships. There is intelligence that exists that all those three corridors are being used. So with our resource we have to uh, sparingly put the resource in each of those corridors. Um, but uh, activities like this, which we did last week, does have a positive effect. Police are continuing investigations into the parcels and say arrests are likely. Michael Breen, Southern Cross News. Embattled former mining minister Adam Brooks will face yet another round of scrutiny after Parliament unanimously decided to further investigate his behaviour. It comes after an Integrity Commission report found he tried to cover up connections to his mining business to avoid political damage. The day Adam Brooks was sworn in as mining minister in February 2016. He lasted just four months. Two years later, he is today facing the highest level of investigation our parliament can undertake. The reference to um, a privileges committee is not an insignificant matter, um, but one 
which we will not object to in the circumstances. All signs of Parliament voted to send him to the committee to determine whether he's guilty of contempt. A finding of contempt against Mr Brooks would increase the political pressure on him uh, to resign. Uh, it also heightens the, the leadership test of the Premier. It comes after a damning Integrity Commission report into his behaviour was delivered yesterday. The report reveals lies upon lies upon lies. It details a cover-up in order to avoid political fallout. Adam Brooks has been caught red-handed trying to destroy evidence. It is a further erosion of public faith in the institution of Parliament. This is a very, very serious matter. The report revealed Mr Brooks deleted many emails, some for political reasons and some for personal. It found he misinformed Parliament and the Premier, but did not breach the Code of Conduct. But facing the Privileges Committee will be yet another test for the disgraced MP. Reading through the Integrity Commission's report, there's plenty of material there on which a Privileges Committee could find Mr Brooks in contempt of Parliament. Further tension for an embattled government as Parliament prepares for its final sitting day of the year tomorrow. Michelle Wisby, Southern Cross News. The storms in Sydney are causing flow-on effects for Tasmania, with flights to and from Hobart and Launceston airports forced to be cancelled or delayed. Qantas, Virgin and Jetstar were all affected after Sydney Airport had to use just one runway at times. The delays are expected to continue this evening, so passengers should check the status of their flights. Most 5,000 Tasmanian educators have taken part in major industrial stop work action over the last two days as unions demand increased pay and better conditions. Schools and other education centres were closed until 10.30 this morning in the southern region with meetings held in Hobart and other major towns. We're not going to accept a, an outcome that doesn't address workload in, and the complexities that come with it. And we're not going to accept an offer that's 2% because that means that our teachers remain the lowest paid in the country. The government says it's disappointed in the action as it's already offered a reasonable pay rise and committed to recruiting more teachers. The amount of animals dying at a roadkill hotspot on the west coast has halved thanks to a noise emitting device. Wildlife experts are hailing the device as a game changer for native and endangered animals with hopes it will be rolled out at a roadkill hotspot statewide. Undergoing her normal checkup, Tassie Devil Maria is in good hands now. But not too long ago, the two year old was in dire straits after being hit by a car got a permanent neurological uh, injury, meaning she actually walks in circles. Not going to be great in the wild doing that, so she will be another permanent resident. It's cases such as this that this small device, installed on the side of a road, is aiming to stamp out. And they're activated by car headlights. And when they're activated, blue and yellow flashing lights um, are emitted from them and a loud piercing um, sound. And what we think this does is it gives wildlife a warning that a car's coming. Just by hitting and killing one animal, that could certainly have a carry-on effect, creating more roadkill from these scavenging creatures. It's been trialled at a roadkill hotspot on the west coast for the last three years, with results from a study on its effectiveness released today. While paddy melons and Bennett's wallabies were found to still be prone to being hit, overall roadkill in the area has halved. Tasmania has a lot of unique special fauna here that doesn't occur anywhere else in Australia and it's important that we try and protect that. Things like eastern barred bandicoots, bettongs, eastern quolls, they only occur here now. The project has been rolled out at other hotspots around the state. It's working in collaboration with the recently released Roadkill Taz app, a way for drivers to report dead or injured wildlife. The app is important in telling us where the sensitive spots for them being hit is so that we can then install these and hopefully keep them in the wild in Tasmania. All drivers urge to slow down while on our roads to help keep the statistics low and ensure these important creatures are kept safe. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News. Fly fishing's top brass has heaped praise on the state's central highlands during an official inspection ahead of next year's World Championship. One international delegate says the region will benefit for years to come when well over 100 anglers arrive at the lakes in 2019. 
The big trout tick-off is underway in the Central Highlands. These delegates have a checklist of what Tasmania needs to have in place ahead of next year's global contest. And so far, they're hooked. Oh no, it's been very successful. They're very happy. Uh, they like the look of all the venues that we've taken them to. Stocks are healthy, with Penstock Lagoon estimated to be holding 14,000 fish, plenty for when the avalanche of anglers arrives next November. New Zealand's Paul Dewar says Tasmania will enjoy long-lasting benefits, much like the ones his country has seen since hosting the World Championship in 2008. The guys that came over came back and brought their friends back and they're still coming now, you know, eight, ten years later. Their four-day tour covers all the competition sites, including Penstock, Little Pine Lagoon and the Meander River. The bar is high after 2018's games were held on these pristine waters in northern Italy. But even the Italian delegates say our lakes are a class above. We have lots of rivers, especially in the Alpine. We have lots of Alpine streams. Fishing is nice, but in Tasmania it's much better. <laughs> A picture-perfect setting for some friendly rivalry. Hopefully we'll be able to show the Aussies how to do it. Tom Johnson, Southern Cross News. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Decorations are popping up across Tasmania, including Hobart's 14-metre high artificial tree at Mawson Place. Workers putting the finishing touches on it today before a big light-up ceremony. This tree will be lighting up 7,000 lights going on. Uh, the the, um, the star will be shining, we'll have choir and music and food vans and it'll just be a really great way to kick off the, the Christmas uh, season. The special light-up event will happen on Friday night and will help raise money for Variety, the children's charity. Now a look at the day's business and finance news thanks to TASPLAN, your local super fund. The Australian share market has closed slightly lower, dragged down by losses to the major miners after mixed commodity prices overnight. The ASX 200 index has dropped by 3.2 points and a short time ago the Australian dollar was trading at 72 US cents and 82.39 Japanese yen. A four-wicket blitz by Gay Bell has Tasmania in control of its Sheffield Shield clash against South Australia. Bell took four for 29 in his spell, which included the wickets of Danger Men Jake Weatherald and Callum Ferguson. Jackson Bird also pitched in, taking two for 39. Four Redbacks players were dismissed for ducks, with the visitors managing just 136 for the innings. After scoring three for 120 this afternoon, Tasmania holds a commanding 169 run lead at Stumps on day two. Jordan Silk and Jake Doran will resume at the crease tomorrow. The Hobart Hurricanes are flying out for two practice matches ahead of their season opener on Saturday. A boost in the side's batting ranks has the coach excited. After finishing rock bottom in the last WBBL season, this is a fresh start for the Hurricanes. With a regenerated batting lineup, the coach is feeling optimistic. I think we're almost clear what the 11 is going to look like. It's just making sure we've got the right people in the right spots. And a big part of that is yesterday's last minute signing of Smriti Madhana, a dynamite top order batsman from India who will soon join the side. Yeah, what a player. Um, she won't be playing in that first game, but um, she's going to be very important for us at the top of the order. This week will also be Sasha Maloney's first crack in the captaincy. It's more probably the off-field stuff that is um, quite new to me, so um, yeah, I'm just taking it all in and, and looking forward to getting started on Saturday. To tennis and world number 24 Mihaela Buzanescu will headline 2019's Hobart International. The Romanian was runner-up in this year's final. It's always good to have those players but I think we've got a, a really strong field, a good mix of um, experience and, and youth and um, that makes it exciting. Next year's tournament will feature six players formerly ranked in the world's top 20 including 2016 winner Elise Cornet. Eddie Ockenden has received a flashy welcome to the Hockey World Cup in India. Please give a big round of applause to the captain of Team Australia, Eddie Ockenden. The Tasmanian will lead the Kookaburras onto the pitch for their first pool game against Ireland on Friday. And the annual Run the Bridge now has its own class of legends. The 39 athletes who have completed every Run the Bridge since its inception 10 years ago are in the group. I've run over the Sydney Harbour Bridge, I've run over the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, but nothing beats running over the, your own home bridge in your own hometown. I say hats off to every single one of these 39 people who have continued to remain injury free over that period of time and, and good on them for supporting a major event. The next Run the Bridge is on February 17. 
Good evening. A little more early scattered shower activity today, but some temperatures did jump above average. Ooze was one of those with our top of 24 degrees. Hobart 18 today, Launceston 23, Burnie and Devonport 19. Iris River topped the rainfall with 14 millimetres. Friendly Beach has had 20 degrees. Smithton, St Helens, Strawn and Flinders Island 19. King Island and Lowhead 18 degrees and Lyawini 16. Low level cloud moved over the state, bringing that odd shower mainly to the highlands today. A bit more coming our way though. That same air Flow had the cloud over southern coastal regions of the mainland. Eastern New South Wales has thundercloud. A trough of low pressure has cloud over the west and through central Australia, while another trough is along the east coast of Queensland. The low moves off over the Tasman Sea tomorrow as a high takes over the east of the nation. A cold front approaches the bite. South to southwesterly winds at 10 to 20 knots over the northwest of the state with variable winds elsewhere later. Swells at 2 metres. Hobart can expect a partly cloudy 20 tomorrow, 19 the top with a possible shower for Signet, partly cloudy for New Norfolk and 22 degrees. 21 and a possible shower for Launceston, 19 the high for Devonport with a shower clearing, a shower maybe for Campbelltown as well and 20 degrees. Burnie partly cloudy, 19, 19 also for Strawn, bit of cloud for Smithton, 21. And for St Helens tomorrow, cloudy and 18 degrees, 18 also for Swansea. Maybe a shower a little further inland at Fingal and 19. And a UV reading from 8 through to 10 is in the high range. On Friday, fine until light showers develop over the west and south. A late shower on Saturday with fine partly cloudy weather over the east and showers easing on Sunday as westerly winds become fresh and gusty. Sunny in Perth. A cloudy start in Adelaide, a clearing shower over Melbourne, a windy 22 with showers for Sydney and 33 and sunny in Brisbane. A little cloudy but fine in Hobart, 17 at the moment, 16 in Launceston, a few showers in the air and 15 degrees right now in Devonport. Seems OK for the resumption of play in the Shield match tomorrow, Rachel. I'm tipping George Bailey to get 100 and a big win for Tasmania. I'm sure you'll be right. We all love George Bailey. Thank you for that, Murph. Well, that's all your news for now. I'll be back later with updates. Thanks for joining us. Good night.